10 trips for traveling abroad. Everyone needs the do's and the do not do's in 60 seconds. Go! <clears throat> International travel requires... A passport. Do you need a visa? Maybe. Check on your destination. Okay. Do you need a vaccine? Maybe. Check your destination. <laughs> Would you recommend getting a pre-check? Yes. For sure. Okay. International travel, how soon do you need to book it? As soon as possible. All right, what about your hotel? Location, location, location. Very important. Digital scales. Yes, gotta have them, gotta wear that bag. I don't wanna get my underwear out at the airport. No. The universal power adapter. Absolutely. You gotta have it, they don't have it. Amount of check baggage you can carry internationally. Typically two, check with your airlines. That's right, and you're gonna pay for them. It's not like the good old days. Give a heads up to your credit card companies. For sure. Or else they'll cut your credit cards off and your trip will not be any fun. Nine seconds left, yay! <laughs> so let's do the deep dive. So international travel requires a passport. Passports right now are 15 weeks. They're seven weeks if you do the expedited. Do not forget to send in your passport card if you got one with your last passport. And how do you know that? Well, because G did that and it almost it cost us, it. it delayed it, it did delay us. It ended up being about 12 weeks and we paid for expedited. But it was my mistake, do not make my mistake. Destinations like Australia, Vietnam require you to have a visa. But Always check the government websites to see what is required. Vaccine requirements, they are moving around right now. Some are, some are not. Ours actually changed while we were out of the Deep. country last year. So what we had to do going over suddenly changed and we had to do something different the coming home. Is be prepared. Right. Be prepared for whatever gets tossed your way because those are very fluid. <laughs> very, very fluid. What do you think about TSA PreCheck? I do like PreCheck and Global Entry. Of course, PreCheck, it seems that everybody's got PreCheck now, so it's not, I don't, it, it is faster. It's just not as fast as it used to be. But Global Entry is so much faster when you're coming back home to skip all those lines, checking your passport and, and the customs and all that. Global Entry used to be very expensive. I think it's like $15 more than uh, TSA PreCheck now. Honestly, the process is almost exactly the same, except the interview is by yourself instead of like couples. I would do global entry. I would not even look at TSA pre-check. It was an easy process. Yes. Too. International travel booking as soon as you can. There's limited supply. They've really cut down on the flight. So when you find out you're going somewhere, you need to get on to that and get it locked down. Also take advantage of any loyalty programs you may have, any credit card things. Those can come in and really save you a lot of money or get you perks like free bags and those type of things. They can get you perks at the airport. Oh, they do, yeah. So they'll also get you into the Delta Lounge or the, uh, the different United, lounges. yeah, mm -hmm. all of the different airlines. If you're carrying a co-branded credit card, most of them will let you into their lounges at the larger airports. And that is really nice because layovers have become longer and longer because there's not as many flights. Your hotel location, location, location. That's for sure. In Paris, our hotel was a couple of blocks from the Louvre. Um, we were actually, we could even walk to the Eiffel Tower. It was a little bit longer walk, but we were right at the Louvre. We were right at shopping. We were right at a park. Everything. Green space. The Tour de France came by. It, it, it <laughs> yeah. did. It might have cost us a little more money per night, but all of the money that it saved us with taxis and a time yes just moving around it, it's a big thing so if you pay 75 dollars for two taxi rides and all of that time put in there but you pay 75 dollars extra for that hotel room so worth you're it. i mean you pick up the time the time is the thing good walking shoes and i know you two like pairs. To take two pairs i take two pairs of that because you're going to be pounding the pavement as in amsterdam we were doing nine miles a day Ooh. Yes. We were doing a lot of walking. And so you really got to have a pair of shoes, uh, all terrain, because you really don't know what you're going to be up against. Right. Digital scales, you want to weigh your stuff. You do not want to pull your underwear out at the airport trying to make your bags and meet weight. Yeah. The, weight uh, the universal power adapter. One thing about that, get a good one. We actually uh, bought three different ones and of the three that we bought, two failed. So we ended up with only one. So do spend a little extra money in that realm. You do not want that piece going down. Right. Pack right for the flight. 
This is this is a hard one for this, me. This is a hard this one. This is a hard one. <laughs> carry on is real important for me. Of course, I part of my, my carry on is camera equipment, but also your medicine that you need. Because right. the my problem is, I always want to make sure I'm prepared when I get to my destination in case my luggage doesn't make it with me. So I usually like to have a change of clothes and my medicine. And then on the way home, you want to make sure that you have your car keys in your carry-on. Oh, yes. We've been there before where the car <laughs> keys were packed in the luggage and the luggage didn't make it home. We did. And then we get to the airport and we can't go anywhere. No car. The keys are, locked. are still somewhere. <laughs> Houston, I think. Yeah. And that was a, I forgot about that fiasco, mm -hmm. but also you can get stranded sometimes. Maybe your flight's running late and it makes you miss a connecting flight and that was the last flight of the night. So if you've got your clothes, you've got your medicine, you, you're not going to get your bags in that scenario until you get to your final destination. So if you don't have it in your carry-on, you're done. Make sure you have your essentials. That's that right. What you have to have. That's it. Give your credit card company a heads up that you're gonna be traveling. You can do that sometimes with a phone call, sometimes through their online banking or an the app. app. Just make sure you let them know that you're gonna be traveling so that when they start seeing charges coming in from overseas, they won't shut down your card. We also always are carrying multiple cards so that if we have any we problems, do. we'll rotate cards. But we also let our credit card companies know. Plus with the app, you can usually let go into the app and tell it and you can get it cut back on. So it is better than it used to be, but that is still something I would definitely say you need to do right. before you cut out across the world. Make the clock your friend. This one's a, a biggie as far as getting to the airport early. I hate getting up early, but we always try to get to the airport early because we don't want to be stuck in some kind of a security issue. But then on the other side, you, you got jet lag. Jet lag. Jet lag is a real thing. It is something else. Thing. I do better traveling east than I do west. You look at papers and studies on jet lag, it actually says that if for every time zone you cross, it takes one day to adjust. So four time zones is four days before your body will actually adjust to it. So if you're doing seven or 10 or 12, that's a big thing. Try to get on their time as soon as possible. Exactly. One big thing, like I say, when you're going east, you can usually sleep going east and get up on the next day. And technically you didn't sleep the whole night, but you can get through the day and sync up on that Keep second going. day. That um, the first day, wherever you are the first day, just try your best to mm. it, maybe if it's stay awake, then stay awake right. until you until your body does adjust to their time. Or if it's take a quick nap, quick nap and get back up. Yeah, you, you want to get in sync as fast as possible. Again, it's all ROI. So any other thoughts on traveling international that we hadn't talked about? Passports don't, you know, passports, we were talking about making sure your passport um, renewed six months after you return home. That's right. But also, it's true. make sure you, you have bring your passport, your passport with on you. you. Yes, we've actually seen that be a problem. But that's a very good note about the passport. You can, used to, you could travel in that last six months with your passport and they would let you go. They will not do that today. Internationally. Yeah, internationally. They will not let you do that. So if your arrival home date, it's after the, in that six month period, you must get your passport renewed or you will not be able to travel. So really take that to heart. Right. We hope you've enjoyed these tips today with Mimi and G traveling the world. See you next time.